from the Black Hills comes a wrestler that is unlike anything that has ever come before. The wrestler known as Abaddon is not from this world or the world after. Instead, Abaddon lives in the dark place in between. Abaddon was signed to All Elite Wrestling in 2020 after a sudden and terrifying victory over Anna Jay on an episode of Dynamite that summer. They were seen before this in AEW, but only in a losing effort against Hikaru Shida earlier that year. Abaddon would go on to haunt Shida at the end of 2020 and would eventually have a match with the then AEW Women's World Champion at the start of 2021 during AEW New Year's Smash. Abaddon would come up short in this effort, but this would not be the last time the two would meet. So my first dark match I was very, I was pooping my pants. I was very scared. I was, um, I didn't, I don't know. I, I was very just, didn't, one, I was in shock. I was like, wow, this is really happening. What is happening? Is this real? Am I alive? I don't know what's happening right now. And he was very supportive, very, he could see it. And I told myself, I'm gonna go out there. I cannot let Sheeta down. I could not, I could not let anybody down. I gave it a thousand and ten percent. She was really easy to work with. Very, very sweet. Um, Justin was also very was very helpful. Uh, Kenny also was very great about everything. Um, it was such a fun match. I cried afterward because I was really proud that I put on something. I look, I look back at it and like I do see all my mistakes, right? Things that I see, maybe you guys don't, but I do, and to know still that at that time, that was the best match I'd ever had in my, like, oh, how was it? a year and like three months worth of wrestling. That was the best match I'd ever had because working with somebody who wanted to see you succeed as well, she made a great dance partner. And I would wrestle her over and over and over again. I've been telling people on this channel to subscribe and they won't. Yes. What can we do about that? Can you help me out? You Maybe if you tell them to subscribe, they'll you do it. You threaten them. I'll threaten them yeah, for you. Yeah, right. yeah. You don't have to do it or you're cursed. Like a phantom, Abaddon would be unseen for most of 2021, but would come out to pester Britt Baker in a hardcore trick-or-treat match in October that would be a strong showing for the living dead girl, but ultimately would result in a loss. So I'm going to go ahead and take an Oreo, and you can feel free to... Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Well. Cheers. Okay. Let's. Go. Oh. I was just gonna take a bite, but okay. So uh, I'm gonna say that's a zero. Grab it on here. Um, who fell on the floor? Guys, it actually is really good. It has a, the dark chocolate really stands out amongst the two chocolate cookies. If you're a chocolate lover, you will like this. It's so gross. It's not good at all. It's not, it's a terrible cookie. Would then, um, Abaddon, would you say that the dark chocolate is a zero out of five? A big zero. God, I'm gonna rate this. I hate to do this, but I'm going to rate it a five out of five. JK, 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 it's a big old zero. It's a zero for me, it's a double zero. It's a triple zero, it's, a, it, it's not. We, we hate it, you know what? We're just gonna throw them out. Who needs them? Not me. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, which, what would you like to uh, go, go with next? Oh, it's a good choice. What do you want with the chocolate, peanut, butter, pie? I feel like this is gonna be a winner. Oh, that smells good, right? Okay. 
She's not spitting it out. Yep. Oh yeah, I think we got a winner. We got a little, we got a little, we got a little. Yep. Oh boy. That's really, you like it. You like that? You're gonna need it. Yeah. What's mine is apparently yours. Yeah. It's a winner. I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Three out of five. Got it. Is that, oh, is that? <laughs> okay, get a little handsy. Okay, we're gonna move right along into our last flavor. Lemon. I know you're excited. I am. We've got a uh, uh, golden Oreo with lemon cream filling. That's all it is. Nothing uh, really fancy about this. But we're going to. Are you ready? Ooh, okay. Right off the bat, it is yellow cream. Ooh, it doesn't really smell lemon. Does it smell like lemon? I don't really smell lemon. But it's yellow, so that makes me think it is lemon. So let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. That's lemon. Oh, that's good. Just give it a big old bite. Like you would do to someone's arm. Okay. Not my arm. <laughs> Not my arm. <laughs> I like zombies. <laughs> that is good. You have to admit that's good. I want to eat the whole thing. It's so good. It almost tastes like lemon custard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you say it's a five out of five? Yeah, I would say it's a five out of five. That is a five out of, That is a bomb ass cookie. Oh my god, I'm eat the whole thing. It's so full too. There's so much filling. It's delicious. Mmm. I love it. Oh my god, I want to eat this whole package. Five out of five. Love it. All right, well, that has been um, my Oreo hour, <clears throat> Oreo taste test. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I know you all love Abaddon very much, and she has a whole bunch of social media things for you to follow. So would you like to tell them, or would you prefer I just put it on the screen? The screen? I'm gonna put yeah. it on. Yes. I'm gonna put it on the, we're gonna go, cause I'm afraid she, she thinks I'm an Oreo. So um, it was so nice of you guys to hang out with us. She's about to eat my arm. I think that's it. I think we're good. I'll see you guys in the next video. I will see you on the next video. <laughs>being excited to see you or or nervous or I think most people are scared <laughs> <laughs> I would be too um, I think more people are, are curious than anything though I met her in Denver three years ago and she was so nervous right and I see this zombie character and how to best portray that on screen and helped her a lot through those times that she was on television and she has really just shot it upwards right she's gotten so much better she comes to my school every week she puts in the work she puts in the training she's lost a lot of weight and she's really good and she's an attraction every time she comes out there the people go crazy right because it's a zombie you can't kill a zombie I mean as soon as you hit her with a chair, she's going to turn her head and look at you and probably bite, take a chunk out of your neck. Yeah. Um, I know she loves it, and I'm very proud of her. She's doing a great, great job. And she's only getting started, right? When I found out I was wrestling Brit, I was excited because I was like, yes, I get to show people what I've 
been working on at that time. Yeah. Um, when I found out it was the main event, I went, what? <laughs> I didn't know how to, like, I, I cried. I cried because I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I, I, speechless, literally. I can't even talk right now, clearly. <laughs> um, I was very thankful and I was, I was very appreciative of the fact that I was trusted with the main event, especially with the champion, Britt Breaker, at that time. Yeah. My favorite match that I've had so far, um, I put everything, like, my, my blood, sweat, and tears went into that match because I wanted it to be disgusting and brutal and I was like, hit me with everything. I don't even care. Just, I want to, I want to get messed up in this match. Yeah, yeah. I literally did. I, I, um, she had suggested, hey, do you, <laughs> this is a question I've been asked a lot uh, this week and so far um, regarding the tacks in my mouth. Were there any in my face? No, I wish. I feel like that would have looked really cool. <laughs> my piercings, uh, everybody was like, oh, there's tacks in her face. I was like, no, that would have looked good though. <laughs> I had suggested a couple of things, like I wanted like my face mashed in them, but we did the, we chose the uh, super kick to the face. It's, even that's a lot, I can't even imagine it. It's, when I heard people freak out, I was like, oh, yes. Did you, did you swallow any tacks? I, I swallowed one. Really? Yeah. I did you it. poop it out? I did. <laughs> I didn't die. Because <laughs> I can't. <laughs> That's one of the most violent things I've ever heard in wrestling. <laughs> Amazing. I'm, I'm metal as hell, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone that would be your dream manager or a couple choices that you would like? As a, as a manager? Dusty's he's volunteering right I will. now. It, it would That's be. actually a good choice. As long it as would. I can take you with a, a collar and a chain and drag you yeah. down to the Hell to yeah. the ring, smack it would you. Be, it would be Dustin, for sure. Be Dustin, yeah. Be for real. Come on, who would you want as a manager? I answered it. You. Whoa, don't get hot. Jeez, don't. <laughs> I want you to bite me or chop me. That's why I sat way over here. When I started wrestling, I before I had been signed, I'd only been wrestling for a year and some change. It was really fast. And then the pandemic hit. And then, because I, I maybe traveled a couple of states. Yeah. Um, Jesus, actually, that's all. I know. <laughs> You're getting there, babe. I know. Um, I want to go to Japan so bad. They beat the crap out of each other, and I love that. I want to be a part of that, too. And I, I, I would go in a heartbeat. I think you would fit in with what they do there. Um, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> it seems like it'd be a good experience. So. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I the they always have fun characters too, and their outfits, like their little outfits, the gear, and and I don't know. It it I I would love to. As new school as they are, and as like fresh and interesting as they are, they have their roots in a very. They seem to, from what I've absorbed and what you're telling me, yeah. in a very tried and true. Uh, wrestling trope of they are the monster character yeah. for a champion to overcome. Yes, They are the boogeyman to slay. They are all of that stuff. You've seen it before with countless other big monstrous people. Not that they are like abnormally large or some kind of seven foot tall monster, yeah. but the character lends itself to be this boogeyman like monster that a champion stops and it's like an overcoming story and characters like that tend to historically not win the title. Yeah. They tend to always put somebody over and never actually win it themselves. So I hope that they break that cycle with Abaddon because from what I've seen, they're very interesting and they have more to offer than just this monster that wins every match except for the one that counts. I hear you on that. And to that effect, there's been a real evolution of the Abaddon character. I don't know if you've followed this, but back when Abaddon first debuted in 2020, mm -hmm. they were very much a zombie girl. Mm -hmm. You know, um, serious. A very serious, nonverbal <laughs> zombie character. And I think mm -hmm. very earnestly undead. I, I think that that was very much. And over time, it's morphed into more of a verbal Abaddon speaks a lot more now mm -hmm. um, kind of jokester kind of um, uh, now genderless 
Mm-hmm. Um, Beetlejuice like. Greetings. This is your living dead resident, Abaddon from AEW. Now, in regards to, per se, my action figure, or saving the multiverse, I ain't gonna do that. Chaotic neutral here. <laughs> I'm dead fool. Let's just say that. Um, but no, we ain't saving nothing. Uh, in regards to my action figure, I got nothing for you. I don't have information. I wish I did, but I don't. I'm sorry. Mm, I don't. My bad. But I hope you're having a good day. I've been well over here in the cemetery. We've just been living it in this coffin. <laughs> And uh, as for my favorite song right now, Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter. Let's go. I hope you're having a good day. A broken collarbone would see Abaddon sidelined for all of 2022, but they would return at the end of 2023 to win a four-way match for an opportunity to challenge Hikaru Shida once again for the AEW Women's World Championship in a Fright Night fight. This would be the highest rated match of Abaddon's AEW run. They would be defeated, but once again they would rise this time to make their AEW pay-per-view debut against Julia Hart for the AEW TBS Championship with a special house rule that biting would be allowed. Gender is a social construct and as a member of said social society, I can construct that any way that I see fit. Please. Elaborate for me. Society is slow to adopt, especially with such syntactically new terms as they, them. The confusion en masse is part and parcel to the struggle we must face if we must adopt any change. If gender is truly fluid, and I'm referring to the people who might call themselves an aunt or an uncle, then it should be able to morph itself into a variety of verbal roles and not be stuck in the binary construct that we have created. Well, this has been a hearty exchange of ideas. Join us next week when our scheduled guest will be Malcolm Gladwell and Too Cold Scorpio. Good night. Currently, Abaddon has been terrorizing Ring of Honor, where current Ring of Honor world champion Athena has been marked by the zombie for annihilation. This is all happening on Ring of Honor, so very few people are probably really checking this out, and you really should go check it out, because some really interesting stuff is happening here. Abaddon is the main challenger right now for Athena's World Championship. Athena's on a record run. And once again, Abaddon's being brought out because who is going to be a legitimate challenge to Athena? She's beaten everybody. But can she beat a zombie, right? That's always going to be a question as long as Abaddon's on the roster. I think any women woman champion here has to eventually come to terms with, can I beat a zombie? So that's what's being set up here. And I think this is where the Halloween match is going to come in. I won't be surprised if it happens, you know, like this week or next week. It, I, I don't think they're saving it for like a Ring of Honor pay-per-view, which is kind of a shame because I think this match could be very, very good. And uh, what I really like about this build is that Athena is terrified of Abaddon. Athena is more afraid of Abaddon than anyone ever has been because what Athena has done is she has chained herself to the backstage interviewer, Lexi. And as an early warning device, she has the backstage interviewer on a chain, on like a 10 foot chain at all times, so that if Abaddon sneaks up on her, she'll eat the interviewer first (laughs) and she'll be alerted to it so that she can make her escape. When Athena has a match, she will chain the interviewer to one of the ring posts and listen for her screams. So she'll know if Abaddon is sneaking up on her so that she can make her escape because she knows she's going to eat Lexi first. That's re- so brilliant. <laughs> I love it so much. Because remember, you don't have to be faster than the monster. You just have to be faster than the other person that you're with. Right, right. 
<laughs> so that's what's going on right now in Ring of Honor, guys. And if you're not watching Ring of Honor, you're really missing out because Athena is trying to get Lexi eaten by Abaddon. And it's brilliant. <laughs> I love everything about that so much. <laughs>